So predictive HR analytics can really help you develop a credible business case. And if you think of predictive analytics as analyzing the data that you hold within your organization, using quantitative analysis techniques and statistical tests to then help you predict particular outcomes and behaviors of people in your organization, there are two very key benefits that, that come out of that type of activity. So one is that it really helps you identify the key drivers of outcomes that you may want to have in your organization or you may not want to have, which in turn helps you address or um, put particular interventions into place to address those drivers for those interventions and outcomes. Um, the second is that it helps you actually simulate future events. So it helps you plug particular conditions into the model, which can then help you identify what future, what different versions of the future might look like. Um, in that way, you actually see particular different future scenarios and you can do different scenario modelling and planning. So an example of using predictive analytics to help with a business case might be, say, in a bank, you're looking to predict the level of customer reinvestment. And looking at the data you have, you might be looking at customer satisfaction data, data from a survey, and putting that together with particular reinvestment amounts and financial outcomes. So say you're looking at an input or the predictive variables might be, so the demographics of the salesperson, the degree to which the salesperson actually understands the customer need, and the degree to which the, customer, the, the salesperson actually makes a recommendation to that customer. And these are rated on a satisfaction survey, say, of one to five, where the customer ticks in a box, you know, I really understand, my banker really understands my needs to my banker really doesn't understand my needs. And the outcome variable is the degree, to, or the amount of reinvestment they put in with the bank. So say when we run our analysis model, we actually find a shared variance between the degree to which the customer feels the banker understands their needs and the amount they reinvest back into the bank. And plugging different values into that model, we can actually then understand that, say, an increase in one of one full point on average, of un the, the degree to which people think that their banker understands their need, equates in an extra 3% reinvestment and say an, an increase of two points on that scale might equate to say an increase of 6% in customer investment. According to this model, the shared variance is in place for say 99% of cases. We can then translate that into, into monetary figures and say, well actually, if we're able to re increase that customer reinvestment amount by 3%, that equates to two million pounds or two million dollars. 6%, four million pounds or four million dollars. And that will actually really help us drive our business case and identify whether it's worthwhile, whether that return on investment is worthwhile, us investing in our bankers to help them understand our customers better. So another example of using predictive HR analytics to help with our business case is sickness absence. Sickness absence is an issue for a lot of organisations and in this case, in this example, let's think of our predictor variables as job strain, which is information we got from our employee opinion survey office location, which is information that we got from our HR database, and also whether or not the employee took part in a wellbeing program, which is actually information we got from our learning database. We've put all those together and our outcome variable is actually sickness absence, or the number of sick days that person took in the year. Now, looking at this, we can actually determine, or let's focus in on the wellbeing program. So if the person took part in the wellbeing program, we plug that into the model, and we actually identified on average the per a person would actually is likely to take two days less sick per year than if they didn't take part in the wellbeing program. Now thinking about that and thinking about the size of an organisation or depending on the size of the organisation, the cost saving could be you know, two, two days per person. So say if you had 8,000 people in the organisation, you'd have 16,000 people days of work that you'd be saving. So depending on the costs of the organisation and the salaries of people in the organisation, you can quickly translate that over to a dollar or a pound value. Taking that value then you can look at return on investment of a well-being program and really build that into the business case for that program to work out whether it's worth doing and to help you justify the program if it's needed. So then you have the financial business case for programs, this can really help you do that and you also have credible evidence-based decisions.